Um, I thought that I was really dangerous. It's something no one's like really done it before, at least not on that type of boat, so. And you need a lot of courage to do that. Like I would never, ever be able to do something like that, especially do it alone, because you need the mentality to do it, and it's pretty crazy. If Jay finishes the transatlantic record, he'll be the first on a mini 650 to do it. And um, he'll get into the Guinness world of records, you know, which is, which is really cool. So we, uh, we arrived yesterday night to Newport uh, and we are going right now to find Speedy Gonzalez. So when we arrived in Newport, it was actually the first time that I was seeing the boat for several months. We had seen some pictures, uh, so you had kind of an idea, but it was really cool to see the boat again. And, and then it, we immediately moved into trying to get the boat ready as fast as possible. Uh, we were in quite a big yard and you know everything in Newport is super yachty so uh, the logistics of trying to find some different materials and things can be different from what we're used to in Europe. Well I really felt that the transatlantic record was uh, different than the mini transat. Um, it felt more, I don't know, like a personal project. Um, it felt more intimate I guess in a way because uh, it was just like the two of us, there wasn't all the like hustle and bustle and, and all the extra um, things from like a, a big race, like the mini transat, no? What are you doing? I'm trying to connect to the radio. This is the first time I fired up a computer on board. <laughs> so we're trying to connect to the radio, making sure everything works. <clears throat> Normally this will be, I think right about here is where I will put a couple different clips and uh, it will live there that way I can kind of move it out of the way if I have to I have the I have the computer the brain is underneath uh, with the efoy and all that stuff so I just kind of got everything packed in and now I'm just trying to see how everything works I was definitely more worried about him um, doing the transatlantic record than during the mini transat because he was going to be at some point, you know, all alone uh, with nobody really nearby. You know, of course, there's always the fear that he's going to fall overboard or and not be attached and things like this. But on the other hand, he had, you know, a computer on board. He was looking at the weather. He had a satellite phone, Iridium Go. He was fully connected. There was a tracker on board. There was a black box on board. So uh, all that kind of like safety, um, was in place and and that you know gives you like a sense of confidence and security i've sailed across the atlantic seven times and most of them have been um the the, the return trip and uh, i really liked that that trip i've always really liked that challenge it's it's very difficult it's not like the transat because you have more consistent conditions they're more predictable these conditions it can be all uh, really anything i mean sometimes it could be absolutely no wind or sometimes upwind or sometimes hurricanes or sometimes a perfect uh, beautiful passage and other times terrible terrible weather for the most part the weather routing looks really good so i'm feeling good there's no hurricanes uh for the moment so that's really good news as well. The boat's uh, just about as best ready as it ever has been. We've done a lot of little jobs and replaced the bearings uh, on, the, on the foils and keel bolts and so every all the main structural stuff is good. I'm feeling good. I'm a little tired because I've been just going, 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 going. But uh, looking forward to, to going offshore and uh, getting this thing started and looking forward to the Atlantic. I love the North the North Atlantic. It's definitely one of my favorite places to sail. So I'm really looking forward to that. Here. Yeah, you're gonna have to give a, give a little. 
Yeah. Take the t take the line off. Obviously, it didn't end the way that I imagined it. We've gone 60 days without a named storm, and today we've got one. Danielle strengthening tropical storm that will likely become a hurricane. We're going to monitor Danielle as it will continue to strengthen. It has been declared a hurricane with winds of 75 miles per hour. Keep that in mind that it is not going to be OK to be out in the water as the waves are gonna be very, very angry. So as I was watching this, this, this uh, disturbance, you know, 12 hours later it would, turn into, it would turn into a depression, and then 12 hours later it was a tropical storm, and then 12 hours later it was a hurricane, and its trajectory was, was going basically right, right where I was. Every time I would download the weather, I was kind of hoping and, and I would continue on a little bit farther going, okay, when I reach Newfoundland, it's really your last jump off point. And it just kept deteriorating and kept deteriorating. I was left with two options. So one option was that I would have to sail upwind because the hurricane's spinning like this. I'd have to sail upwind, tacking all the way to 60 degrees north, which is essentially Iceland, and then coming upwind all the way to France, it would have took like forever. Or uh, the option was to turn and go downwind around Danielle, which would have been normally an okay option because then the hurricane's gonna keep going up. So you're going down, it's usually okay. But the issue was then quickly Behind it was Earl, so then we had Earl was coming up another hurricane. I'd have to sail in front of one hurricane and behind another, squished in between, basically a hurricane sandwich, never a good idea in any boat, uh, not even in a mocha. I really was left with no choice because it was those were my options, which is not really an option. I've been coming back ever since this morning when I took the decision. I hope to for a while. The corridor that was going to be open that was looking quite nice for me to get to France is completely shut down over the last 24, 48 hours. When Jay made the decision to abandon the transatlantic record and uh, head back to store the boat for the winter, uh, he called me and, you know, immediately I, I, I said, well, were you, you were going to do it again, no? And, um, and we were both kind of like on the same page with that. And, and, and I think that it was a good first try. You know, I think that there's a lot of things that we can do better next time around. Um, and, and yeah, we just uh, look forward to, to doing it all over again. <laughs> okay, so what do I think about do him doing it again? One, crazy, and two, crazy. <laughs> Poppy's got guts. <laughs> 